The Gauls were experiencing some internal conflicts with the chaotic Helvetii, as well as threats from the aggressive Suebi. But then Julius Caesar appeared as a troubleshooter. <laughs> However, were the Romans really trustworthy allies? Or was Caesar just a greedy conqueror? The Gauls hadn't forgotten that Dumnorix, the former chieftain of the Aedui, had been killed by Julius Caesar a few years earlier. On top of that, Akko, the chieftain of Senones, was beheaded for treason against Caesar. The death of Akko triggered already pre-existing anti-Roman sentiments among the Gauls. So here they were. The Gallic chieftains had a secret meeting in the middle of the forest and decided to revolt against Caesar. Firstly, it was the Canutes who initiated an attack in Cenabom and they killed the Roman traders and equestrians who were in charge of grain supply for Caesar. And secondly, there was an ambitious young aristocrat from the Averni tribe. His name was Vercingetorix. Once when he was raising an army to fight against the Romans, his uncle Gobanitio, the chieftain of the Averni tribe, found it out and expelled him. Far from being discouraged, Vercingetorix continued raising an army large enough to force his political opponents out of town. Vercingetorix came back to Gergovia and became the chieftain of the Averni. But he had higher ambitions than just being the chief of his tribe. He wanted to unite the entire Gaul and defeat Caesar. Because of the great appeal of this charismatic Avernian man, lots of bigger and smaller Gallic tribes were willing to join him. If some refused to join, he made them join by force. His power and influence grew like blazes, and a number of separate Gallic tribes who used to fight against each other now united as one power under his leadership. He was indeed not like other Gallic chiefs. He was smart, prudent, and a good strategist as well. From his point of view, however, the United Gauls were still no match for Caesar's Roman army. So he avoided direct assaults, but harassed the Romans indirectly, broke their supply lines, or even destroyed some Gaulish villages when he thought it was necessary. In other words, he used the Fabian strategy that had been used against Hannibal during the Second Punic War, in combination with a more extreme scorched earth policy. What is interesting is that the secret meeting, the slaughter in Cenabon, the rise of Vercingetorix and his Fabian strategy all took the Romans completely by surprise. And an even greater surprise was waiting for Caesar. Vercingetorix defeated the mighty Caesar and his Roman army in the Battle of Gergovia. After defeating Caesar, Vercingetorix wanted to nail his victory and chased after the retreating Romans. But this soon turned out to be a big mistake. Despite having been defeated in Gergovia, the Romans' morale was not broken at all. Especially in such an open battlefield, the Romans excelled as usual. As a result, Vercingetorix and his army were being crushed and had to flee to a town of the Mandubi tribe called Alesia. Being surrounded by Caesar's army, Vercingetorix dispatched his cavalry all over Gaul to ask the Gallic tribes for help. Unfortunately for Caesar, he soon heard the news that a massive Gallic relief army was coming to Alesia. The situation once again seemed to change in Vercingetorix's favor. Caesar could perhaps have retreated at this point, but he did not. Instead, Caesar did something extraordinary. It marked the start of the Battle of Elysia, one of the most remarkable siege battles of all time. <laughs> 